Good morning, good afternoon, and good night, and welcome to the pod where we chat, argue, and wax poetic about the movies that we love, hate, or simply worth talking about. All movies have something to say, and we enjoy trying to analyze what they capture. Welcome to The Shatter After. How is everybody doing out there? I'm Brandon Alvarado, the Scarlet fan here, and I'm back here with The Shatter After crew to talk more awesome movies. And what a movie Top Gun is. Yes, this take of The Shatter After is about the 1986 Tom Cruise vehicle of the air, Top Gun. A lot to say about it, and of course, I'm your company with my good friend, Mike Thomas. All I was going to say <laughs> is I have the need for speed. <laughs> perfect, perfect. And the good man, Nate Richard, thank you for joining us, man. Welcome uh-huh. to The Shatter After. Happy to be here. Mike was going to say what I was going to say. <laughs> need for speed. <laughs> So what I'm going to say is, um, I heard that you're a Top Gun fan. So I think it's yes. going to be a very, very interesting mix of people. Because, Mike, how many times have you seen Top Gun? This would be number three for me. Okay. So we have an immense fanatic. We have a person that knows the movie. And we have a person that just left a theater. <laughs> so this is going to be very interesting. Because Top Gun is a lot of things, and a lot of things to a lot of different people. Because one of the things that I can attest to is that even though I've never watched this film, I've always known that Top Gun, it's it's a big thing. It's been a big movie for years. It's one of the biggest things for Tom Cruise. Um, it pretty much is Tom Cruise's vehicle. And also, whenever the whenever the talk about a sequel was around... Even me, someone who's never seen Top Gun, uh, I know that a sequel is something that's been in the works for decades. And now that it's finally coming out, it's this is the perfect time to talk about the original that actually was so good for so many people that a sequel is being made and everybody's just going crazy about it. Especially now that Tom Cruise is like the action star, right? Like, whenever someone yeah. thinks of an action star, they think about Tom Cruise throughout the 90s, sort of 2000, 2010s. Um, in 2020, end of 2010, actually Keanu Reeves, but, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but Tom Cruise is awesome. So we have a lot to talk about. Nate, thank you for joining us. And I say, let's get into Top Gun. So let's go around the table. Um, let's find out what everybody thinks, initial thoughts, how many times you've seen it, and why this movie is important for you. Um, I would say, Nate, you're the guest. Talk to me. Why Top Gun? What's what's Top Gun to you? So I'll start by saying I come from a, a lot of my family and a lot of my friends are obsessed with airplanes and the Navy and everything like that. My dad, he was in the Navy. My uh, Awesome. Two of my best friends. I mean – Literally, they would just, whenever they would come over, they would just talk to my dad about, like, aviation and airplanes and everything like that. And then one of the friends, both of his parents are pilots, so he was also, like, brought up with this movie. And, like, I would watch it with them. I would watch, like, this was a movie that holds, like, a lot of, you know, sentimentality to me. And I like Tom Cruise. I also, it's a very summery kind of movie. So yes. I like yeah. that kind of feeling as well. I love the Kenny Loggins Danger Zone. I There's just a lot I really like about this movie. And then okay. rewatching it, I've seen it. I've lost track because one of the times that I watched it, I know I think I watched it for the first time when I was like 11. And then I've watched it a couple of through times throughout middle school i remember one of the times we were on a eighth grade uh it was performing arts field trip and we had these like they rented out these buses that had the dvd players so the whole bus could watch it and uh i made my friend bring top gun (laughs) and i guess even though it's pg i i don't think the parents were uh that thrilled with that because Last night watching it, I forgot. It's a very sensual movie that whole time. I, I don't think the rating system for movies was at the point that it is now, no. where PG yeah. means PG and PG-13 means PG-13. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Speaking because there's, rating- there's, there's, a, there's a line between PG and R, and this definitely goes behind enemy lines. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> there's literally a locker with 
uh, a topless woman in like in the background. I'm just like that slipped past the PG. <laughs> you know why? Because we do it for the troops, gentlemen. <laughs> 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 we uh, that's awesome yeah. that's awesome what a what a great lowdown I, I like i like the idea that it's it's so this movie for you it's like it's i mean this is like the worst comparison ever but like i used to bowl when i was a kid like i was in a league <laughs> or whatever so so um this will be the equivalent of kingpin for me like if yeah. kingpin was right like not that Kingpin is that movie, but it's like that's kind of personal connections. Like the type of movie that if it was on TV, you and your dad or your family would sit down and just watch it. Like it doesn't matter. Oh yeah. Church. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. awesome. That's that's I mean, whenever someone has a connection to a movie like that, I I, I just want to know. I, I, I love and seeing all the connections. Like you mentioned so many things, and I was like, ooh, that's like, like so awesome. Now I want to meet your dad. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome that's great yeah incredible mike talk to me top gun yeah top gun is just a really awesome movie you know like top to bottom i just really enjoy it it it's a little slow in the beginning for me but like once you get like 10 minutes in it's just non-stop and i just love every second of this movie um i love all the characters tom cruise is phenomenal um yeah i just there's not much for me to add on top yeah. of, I just really enjoyed Top Gun. I can't wait to see uh, what Top Gun Maverick looks like. Because if it can build on top of that legacy, mm -hmm. like you guys were saying, mm -hmm. it's going to mm -hmm. be an incredible movie. I really want to know what you're thinking, Brandon, because you you just watched this movie for the first yes. time. And I I want to yes. relive that. What was it like watching Top Gun for the first time? So 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 look, for me to tell you that I am head over heels this movie, no. In the sense that this is not my movie. Like, this is not when I would like to watch. Like, I'm a big um, when it comes to anything militaristic. I, I, I'm not. That's not my genre. But I love good stories. And and I think to me, uh, what what kind of didn't make Top Gun click for me is that when you think about it, story is not the that really Top Gun's objective. No. Right. Yeah. So yeah. like Top Gun's objective is. We want to. We wanted to make a movie about planes and the people behind the planes. So everything that has to do with the military, with the with all the drama, with the soldiers, the pilots, the actual scenes, that is like. I'm gonna be honest. I've seen a lot of movies, and I don't think I've seen, um, jet plane cinematography like this. Yeah. Even now. Like, I think mm -hmm. it's, that's like something that surprised me how not dated it feels. Like, even now watching like uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier and that opening scene on that first episode. A yeah, lot with, of that is CG. Falcon in the sky. Yeah. yeah. Right. A lot of that is CG here, uh, over there. There's no CG here and it looks great. And like, it makes me think about the scenes in the trailers where you actually see all the jet and everything, you know, like Mission Impossible style. I mean, I'm surprised <laughs> that, that, that Tom Cruise is still inside the plane on this one because now we know he just goes outside planes. Um, I, I had to, I can't, I can't help myself, but, um, yeah. but that's how I feel about Top Gun. Like I, I, to me, I kind of, I can see the, the big story hole, but the excitement and how well everything else is done, it just elevates everything else. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the flaw is not able to keep it on the ground. Eh. Um, so so that's my enjoyment. I mean, it's, it's a hyper macho movie. It's a super summer movie. So I got to agree with you, Nate. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice. I really enjoyed it because it's like, it knows what it wants to do. It knows how to do it. Like they had a, you can tell that there was a vision and, and they knock it out of the park. And it's funny because it makes me think even in some of the acting scenes, it's like, Hey guys, we got the movie set up, but I mean, we need a story. So we need to put something in there and, and make it work and make it connect. You know what I mean? It, I mean, it's a pile of things. Someone has to go down. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's the way I feel. And the funny thing is that what, what makes the blandness of the story not weigh anything down is that they picked the best actors of the era to be in the movie. Like, like, like you know, you and we all know here at least that we, those that know movies like Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer. These are the people that were at the top of the game at this point, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, these are like not only that. Tim Robbins is like 
in and out of the movie, like out of nowhere. I'm like, I, I saw his face like an extra, and I was like, that's not Tim Robbins. And then I'm look, and I'm looking at the at the at the at the beginning of the cast list at the end of the credits, like, shit, that's Tim Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> so like they have the all these great cast of actors, and even they're delivering the lines in a very good way. Um, the relationships feel authentic, but. If you, that's the one thing. I'm a big story guy. Mike knows me. I'm all about story. I'm all about those connections. But at the same time, I cannot deny that everything else is great. It's phenomenal. Some of the best thing I've seen, I, I really, really enjoyed all that. And it actually got me excited for Maverick. Because now, I'm actually hoping, it's been 30 years. Tom Cruise has been around. I can actually tell the difference that he actually can act a lot better now. <laughs> Yes. So I'm yeah. like, maybe they gave him a better script for Maverick, and I, I kind of, I kind of want to watch it now, because because if they can keep up this level of action and and cinematography, it give me a good story. I think I think Top Maverick might be perfectional. You know what I'm saying, Jeff? Yes. Yeah. You know, Top Gun, like Nate said it earlier, it's it's just like this perfect summer movie, right? Where it's one of those things where it's, you, you're just here to have a fun time with it. It's not the right. deepest story, but again, the characters are fun. The yep. set pieces are phenomenal. Yes. Um, one of my favorite bits of watching it this last time is just reading the credits, right? And you just see character <laughs> names like Maverick, Ice, Goose, Viper, Jester, Wolfman. It's like this, they just had a blast <laughs> making this movie. It's like it's character. like they're trying they, they figure they, they grabbed the list of all the rejects from Streets of Rage <laughs> and they just started giving them to different people. Yeah, it's just like I don't think I've ever seen a cast of characters with that great of like all of the names are just phenomenal. Hollywood, yeah. come on. <laughs> yes, yes. It's just a movie that's that's just a fun time all around. And I yeah. The story isn't its strongest suit, but I mean, come on, Goose's death scene is yes. yeah. heartbreaking, and so that's yes. how they they still that is the strongest. That is, a, I, I would say that that's the one scene, that one turn that I was like, okay, this is yeah. It. I feel like though, like the story isn't the strongest, but they still made you care about those characters enough to where that scene yes. is effective. Yes. So I feel like Top Gun accomplished everything it really wanted to in that regard. But yep. that's just me. I have to agree. I, I remember in middle school when I was starting to look, I mean, I was always obsessed with movies, but in middle school when I started looking at films like analytically, Goose's death scene sticks out to me as one of the first movie scenes that really have that emotional impact to me. And it's funny because you don't think about that with Top Gun, a scene with erotic beach volleyball scenes <laughs> and French kissing to take my breath away. But yeah. yet again... It, there's something so, like you're saying, it, it's not the story, but it's that friendship bet bet between Tom Cruise yep. and uh, Anthony Edwards, the Maverick and Goose, that really makes that film work so well. To me, that's like the true yep. romance. It's a bromance yes. of that movie, not him and uh, it's Kelly Press. Or who's the... Um... the Kelly, Kelly McGillis. Kelly McGillis. Kelly McGillis. Yeah. 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 So it's funny that you say that because one of the things that stands out to me, and here's here's how, here's how I see it. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing because for the movie mm -hmm. it did work, but that's the kind of thing that uh, I gotta assume is intentional. Is okay, mm -hmm. you're the you're the fanatic, not me. Yes. Is there a director's cut of Top Gun? Or is this it? This is it, I'm pretty okay. sure. Okay, because to me. Not that it was wrong because the moment hit, right? But mm -hmm. there's a sudden strong shift, very dramatic shift when when it, when it all goes down with Goose. Like you're yes. in a different world altogether, a different movie altogether. But yeah. at the same time, one can argue that life does that, you know? So you can argue that in, in, in the military doing that kind of dangerous work, that shift is going to happen, which I, which I think is a very good contrast. Um, and it grounds the movie a lot. Mm -hmm. So I like that. And also, we got to give props that even though she barely was in the movie, you got to admit, they picked Mick Ryan for that scene yeah. when she's crying with Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah. Like, that's why they got Mick Ryan. You want to go cry, you get Mick Ryan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, and, and that was like a powerful scene. It delivered. It was great. Um, 
Tom Cruise's arc from there and forward was, I mean, his arc throughout the movie is actually pretty good and simple, but, but I, I really did enjoy it. Now I do want to say this, this is an honest question. The budget of this movie, did it go towards the jet plane scenes or was it the soundtrack? Because the <laughs> licensing in this movie yeah. is like, bro, someone just said, get all the tracks. <laughs> yeah. Like someone just bought a jukebox and said, let's see what comes out. Okay, we're going to use all of it. <laughs> it might have the record for needle drops, right? <laughs> yeah. Bro, bro. It's like, did you notice that there's no silent movement? Almost no silent movement, no silence in almost the entire movie. And the soundtrack is like all this meaty stuff. But at this, but it's like crazy. I was so surprised. Like every time I felt that every time a new song would play, I would just take a shot. Oh, <laughs> you'd be so wasted. Yeah. yeah so wasted. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm just looking at the IMDB right quick, going through the cast list, and I just love that Wilson the volleyball is listed as the volleyball. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, that could just no. be somebody on IMDB just messing around. Yeah. But that's just that's just very weird, possibly. Right? But still, now now I kind of want to track IMDb to see how many how many credits this Wilson the volleyball have. <laughs> Castaway be probably the only other major role that was his biggest one. You'd be surprised. It's one hit wonder, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just like the songs in this movie. No, I'm kidding. Um, oh man. I mean, there's a lot of records. Um, so. If you were to say, Mike, that you had a favorite scene or favorite moment, what would you pick? Ooh, okay. Well, the volleyball scene is iconic, right? That, that That's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Top Gun. Yes. But I, I... I didn't know that. Is that a thing? Like, Yeah, yeah it's an entire meme at this point, dude. Yeah. <laughs> You're feel 30 so years too removed, late, but yeah. Apparently. <laughs> So the volleyball scene is one, but okay. if I had to pick a specific moment, it's probably like Maverick's entire like introduction, right? When we're flying the plane at the yes. beginning of the movie, because yes. him flipping it upside down, doing yes. like a barrel roll in the sky is, tells yes. you everything you need to know about that character and his style. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's, it's not a perfect movie, but that might be a perfect character introduction for me personally. And it's funny because they say that because... In that scene, you learn everything you need to know about Maverick. Right. Right. Um, you kind of learn more about Goose as they go into Top Gun, go in, get into Top Gun, and they start getting scolded, and, and kind of Goose starts opening up to him, like confronting Maverick, right? Which is what I like. One of the things that I like about Goose's character is that even though he is this mild mannered, right, and he Kenny Brown just follows Maverick's lead, he does have the courage to say, Maverick, you got to wake the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like he's able to to make that comment, make that confrontation, which is really what you want in a good partner, right? right. Your best, the best partner, the, the person that you're going to trust with your life or that's going to trust you with his life is that person that, yes, you're going to have a good time, but when it comes, when push comes to shove, he's going to tell you the truth and it's going to expect that you react and do something about it to, so that you can both succeed, right? But um, I got to agree that I love, I, I didn't notice though that that scene when he goes upside down, yeah, like like it's not a real scene. You can tell that like it's kind of plastic one on top of the other, but still, it didn't ruin the magic for me because Maverick and Goose are having such a good time with it that I that that that's that it, it, it aids to that suspension of disbelief that you get whenever you go to a movie. Yeah. So like that's like epic movie moment. So I gotta agree with you on that. I do enjoy that. What about you, Nate? So do you want the ironic answer or do you want my like truthful answer? Because I, I both want, agree. I want both. But please label them correctly for the fans. <laughs> I mean, ironically, the meme fanatic in me, I, I love that beach volleyball scene. Who, who doesn't? It, it's yes. great. Yes. It's magical. But Oh, and by the way, Maverick's kind of a dick. He left it tied and left. Yes, that is true. <laughs> and I know... Yeah. The trailers for uh, Maverick show a new beach volleyball scene, so... Because, you know. Yeah. <laughs> for the fans. They have Top Gun without For the fans. It. But... Elon would... Musk is going like this as soon as I get Twitter. No, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, just make every, ba every profile's banner just like a still, like, the beach volleyball scene. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Perfect. But... 
he would have to do it like a year after David Mabes. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, th- there's a lot of movies that like I would watch even like in high school or like middle school or even some of them early in college where it's like they're classic movies. I love them, but there's not like a there's only like one or two scenes that really like stick with me. With Top Gun, it's not like the most like prestige film out of like my favorite movies. Yeah. Yet there's so many scenes that have always been ingrained in my head, especially the scene with Goose's death, the great balls of fire, uh, yes. the the bar scene where they're uh, singing "You've Got That Loving Feeling," the opening, yeah. and uh, the tongue French kissing, this the quote unquote sex scene. Like all of that, yeah. there's something about it how it's done that those kinds of scenes and i don't know if it's the way tony scott like filmed it mm-hmm. or something or just that where it feels almost like that americana kind of summer summery uh kind of thing that makes it really i don't know it's not like a comfort movie like i find comfort in like that because i mean this movie is essentially a propaganda like a recruiting tool for the navy <laughs> yet it kind of it could it could be I, seen that way <laughs> i know some people have said it's like that but at the same time i think it's that. kind of I didn't it's kind that. of a comfort movie for me in that way where it's like that americana like fourth of july kind of movie or memorial day it, it also kind of just reminds you of home right because you have that yeah. such a special connection to this movie Right. Oh yeah, it does. It's yeah. funny that you you mentioned the idea of Americana, which, it, in my understanding, which I may be wrong, it's all about this this hyper realistic idea of of life, right? Especially mm-hmm. American Dream and all that stuff, and and that is something that it's always lingering beneath the surface of this film. Is that it's actually very surreal. Yeah. Like like none of the characters, it's like. I'm not going to be a heretic because I appreciate the movie enough. And I'm not going to say that Goose's death was meant to feel over the top because it's not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's one of the rawest scenes in the entire movie. Like if, if the characters have been over the top from start to finish, especially in their interactions with each other, because um, that is like the most grounded s- sequence. It's not just a scene where he dies. And, Ever since that that plane falls and you see him like holding his body in the water, that it's like the most grounded scene. Yes. Like when the lifeguard has to tell him, "You have to let him go," and the i and the idea that he doesn't let him go till the end of the movie, yeah. like that whole thing just carries right. Um, it's it's powerful, um, but beyond that thread beyond that thread right everything's kind of surreal like all the characters exist beyond themselves like like these are not people that you're actually gonna meet right like they don't really exist but they but they abide in this world because you got to think about it fighter pilots are not normal people like not everybody like a lot of people can fly a plane not everybody can fly a jet plane, yeah. you know. And it's like, and I like how this is like a like a hyper, div, like a hyper divisive community. Like, oh no, you guys are the one percent of the one percent that get to this school to do this, right? So it's it, it's it's meant it's perfect for you to understand that these people are supposed to be larger than life because they are larger than life. Yeah. But a lot of times, it made me think of what you said about the Americana aspect that all these characters do feel like. Like they're coming off the screen, which I think it's very interesting. And it actually is a play in the sex scene. Like the sex scene is like there's a lot of blue that normally yes. doesn't exist. And there's a lot of blue and black. And like for some reason, um, interesting. But um, you know, like there, there's a there's a lot of stuff that goes on, and and it all looks like a painting, it looks surreal. And then when she wakes up, and of course it's very nice, but everything is like magical. As opposed to them deciding if it would be raw, which which I, I, it makes it makes me think like maybe the sex scene is the most blatant um, display of that surrealness. Yeah, but it, it's actually carried throughout the film. Um, 
which is very interesting. It's a very good point you bring, Nate. Um, did you catch any of that uh, Americana, Mike? <laughs> a little bit. Um, the, the, the thing is, and I know that uh, Nate probably doesn't necessarily agree with it. I don't see it as, as propaganda. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't, don't, I don't like, either. I don't I either. Just, I know some believe it as that. I don't. Yeah. I can see how somebody, though, could watch that movie and be like, I want to join the Navy now. Like, if that was in the 80s when people, when social media wasn't, right. like, around, if somebody, like, you just got, like, a college uh, college dropout sitting in the theater for, he got kicked out for partying too hard at his frat. Like, he sits down, he watches Top Gun, he's like, I want to join the Navy now. And then he gets all of his buddies to watch it. And then they all join it. And it's like... Because he wants like... to play volleyball. Yeah. <laughs> He wants to get to the danger zone. No, but just... the re- <laughs> the reason that I say wow. um, I don't necessarily feel that way is because it at points it kind of glamorizes that entire idea of mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. a pilot. But oftentimes, like as soon as Goose's death hits, you realize how yeah. real this job is. Yes. And so, like yes. the first half of the movie, I can see it that way. But anybody mm-hmm. who's finished the movie, I'm gonna be yeah. like, yeah, I don't know if I want to be in this situation. Yeah. And it's funny that you say that because you really don't feel the stakes of anything, right? Until mm-hmm. Goose is dead. Yeah. And you know I, what like I mean. You like, were saying before, mm-hmm. I feel like that's very intentional, right? Where right. it yeah. was pie in the sky. It's all about that um, shift, right? It, it it goes to that tonal shift, and it feels very awkward and hard. But like you were saying before, that's probably the point because the death right. was sudden, and so you're feeling that whiplash, that Mavericks feeling, and so I feel True. like. I feel like that's that's what makes this movie great because mm-hmm. yeah, story wise, it may not be the strongest like overall, but it still knows how to use its characters and use the plot points that it wants to hit effectively. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like, ha- especially where we end with Maverick's character at the end of this movie, right, where he does have to overcome that grief, that fear, and get back out there. It's all built on everything everyone around him is telling him, trying to build him back up, help him move on. And so I feel like that, that all, especially for me, I think that all just kind of works. That's when the movie clicks. Um, The idea of Top Gun, sometimes it's like, why does this movie work? This movie shouldn't be nearly as fun as it is. But for for me, I know not necessarily for you, Brent, but for me, it all just kind of clicks into place once you get to like the middle of the second act. And it's like, boom, that's what makes this iconic. That's what makes this a classic. And you know what's funny, though? It makes me think also that you notice that there's no silence because the movie's being carried from one film, from one song to another, right? Yeah. Um, and I also kind of think that it's intentional. They're brainwashing us now. Um, <laughs> uh, but as I'm listening to you guys talk about it and, and share your thoughts, I'm kind of like enjoying the movie more and more because yeah. you guys are bringing a lot of valid points. And, and, the sh- I, I keep going back to that shift, like we've all said multiple times. The shift is real, is drastic. And and now as I analyze the character of Maverick, is what a what what a powerful way to give his character a turn. Because what's the whole thing about Maverick from the beginning? Not only is he kind of cocky, not only is he confident, but he's confident in his skills. Why? Because he knows what he's in control of. And he's a character that's always in control. So what happens is you put him in a situation where he has no control. And he loses control. And then everything goes sideways. And he loses his friend. I mean, and and you see his breaking confidence. But it's it's it's, it's it feels powerful. It feels good. Be- yeah. In the sense, not, well, not that goes that. But like... It, it it feels like it clicks with what it's exactly what his arc needed um, to making him to someone that that we would follow. And, mm-hmm. I, and I like that as a very sincere also narrative for his character, because because, for example, you got to think the way this movie starts. You think that it's going to play like a Harry Potter film, right? Like he's going to win the Goblet of Fire. <laughs> you know, he's going to right? And even though he didn't win Top Gun, the, the, he wins respect of number one, which at the end of the day is better or higher than, you know, right. than, than winning that that his name on the plaque. Um, 
which I don't know, man. I'm liking the movie more. Damn it, guys. No. Yes. It's working. You know, it's accomplished. <laughs> the propaganda set in. <laughs> oh, I, I do want to talk about the propaganda thing. And, and I think it's very interesting that you bring that up. Because you got to think about also, like, that angle is always kind of pushed by a specific crowd. Yes. Right? And, and, and which to me, as soon as I see it that way, it completely loses all kinds of validity in my yeah. sense. Because oh, when yeah. you think about it, I mean, first of all, even if you join the Navy, nothing guarantees you're going to be a fighter pilot. That's one. Two, if you don't have the height, the if you wear glasses, you can't fly. Let's start with that. <laughs> like, like there's a lot of different. There's a first of all, Tom Cruise is too short, but we're not going to talk about that. But like, there's there's so many. I mean, I think I don't know. Maybe. Um, I mean, he can ride that bike. Um, but. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm right. So, <laughs> but here's the thing though, like there's so many different things that come into play that are beyond anybody's control. Like you can't just go to the Navy and decide I'm going to be a fighter. Pilot. Yeah. It, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. So who are you really selling it to? It doesn't make any sense because in reality, the only people that this would make sense to is people that actually know that Top Gun actually exists. Does Top Gun actually exist, Nate? I am not aware that I think it might. Damn it, Nate. That's why we brought you here. You're supposed <laughs> to know these things. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is real. It is okay, real. Bet. Awesome. It is real. <laughs> good save. Good save. Brain was about to kick you out of here. <laughs> Power of the Google. I will click you. No. I actually have pulled up where I found the propaganda angle from, and it's the producer of the movie said it. John Davis, he said uh, that it was – Basically, use it as a recruiting video for the Navy. <laughs> oh, so, oh, that is okay. So, what he's saying is that it has been used. So, they've used footage of the movie to recruit people. Let me, right? uh, it's this is what the, I'll use Wikipedia. I know they're not the most reliable, but we trust uh, in the wiki. I give them two dollars every five years. <laughs> it's got to be for something. You're the one guy who pays for it. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, someone's got to be the guy. I mean, I they guilt you. I, I don't blame you. Like, I feel bad <laughs> if I see that. Right? <laughs> it says, film producer John Davis said that Top Gun was a recruiting video for the Navy, that people saw the movie and said, wow, I want to be a pilot. The Navy had recruitment booths in some theaters to in- attract enthusiastic patrons. After the film's release, the U.S. Navy stated that the number of young men who joined wanting to be naval aviators went up by 500 percent so everything we said for the last 20 minutes or so has just been <laughs> wrong nice <laughs> well here's the thing though did it happen we don't know yeah who knows he, he could have just been wanting to make himself feel good i don't know <laughs> true uh, yo producer- what was that what was that movie because i think if, if anything was a promotion for pilots what was that movie that had that line with that guy? I want to be a pilot. What was that movie? Like it oh. became a meme for the longest time. I want to be a pilot. <laughs> like everybody was making fun of it. But uh, I tried to find it. Google betrayed me. Um, but it's funny that John Davis says that because you got to think about it. Um, you can't really. I mean, all propaganda is it's, it's, it's false dreams, right? But I don't know. Damn it, John. We're making good points here. Um <laughs> Now, can we talk about the jet planes? Because here is the thing that got me so interested and so kind of like wowed. Number one, you can't CGI anything. It's 1985, 84, right? It's so everything was filmed and everything looks great. And here's the biggest thing that surprised me. Tony didn't reuse any shots. There, I mean, at least that I could notice. I've only seen it once. But every, you know how when you watch like a like a film or an anime or whatever, and you kind of notice, yeah, they're reusing this shot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because you know, you know, money, budget, or just laziness, right? Like we watched this show once um, in the amateur target we covered, 
and we can we can just tell like the same shot is used like in three different episodes against you know it's, it's one of those things like you don't want to you don't want to be that guy yeah. but it's like eh, it's boring but you know, because but the fact that they shot so much footage that they didn't have to reshoot anything was phenomenal and then at the end of it which to me is one of the greatest shots is that shot of maverick leaving the um the, the fleet the flight what do you call it the fleet carrier whatever it is a flight carrier a flight yeah. carrier leaving the aircraft flight carrier, carrier yeah aircraft carrier at yeah. in the final act by the final scene and it's a particular one shot when he goes out and the camera is like at the it's looking towards the tail of the plane and it's going in circles. That, that particular one shot was so great because after everything we've seen, it refreshes, it refreshes your eyes. And it's like, I can't believe after not reusing any scenes that I could see the best scenes are the end of the movie. Yeah. Yes. Like that blew my mind. I, and I got to say it, it was great. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. One of the things that has actually been in my head throughout this podcast is I can kind of compare this movie. I am also a huge Rocky fan. So yes. this these movies, this movie actually kind of reminds me not of the first Rocky, which was a little more grounded, or even really the second one, but like the third movie or the fourth movie. This where is it Rocky has, yeah, it's Rocky IV, 100%. essentially. It There's has stars, that, like, we can say they're Russian, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> they have that rah-rah, like, America kind of feeling, yeah. but then yeah. it's super, like, Rocky Four. it has a ton of montages. That I always joke that, a lot of people always joke, that's like half the movie, or over yes. half the movie of Rocky Four is Rocky. montages. <laughs> but yeah, it's Rocky. We love it, still, and yet... Wait, are we there's calling, that... are we calling Goose Apollo? Is that what we're doing? Yes, basically, yeah, okay. it's kind of a similar thing where yes. it's this very goofy 80s flavored movie, yet it has that moment. Rocky IV has that moment where Apollo is killed in the rain and it's heartbreaking. It brings the whole movie down, it makes it feel real at that yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And though, as whereas I think Rocky IV kind of sets it up backwards, kind of goofy towards the ending with his, you know, final speech ending yeah. the Cold War. But, um... Yes. Yeah. But, whereas that, I, there's still that kind of comparison. You could even bring that in with the sequels. Like, Creed, when that came out, a lot of the Rocky sequels, they're very, very cheesy. I think Rocky Balboa kind of grounded it a little bit more, but Creed... That was the best one, and I, I mean, the first movie I always say, it's my all-time favorite movie, but I could, I would also accept someone saying that Creed is, you know, the better of the two movies. Yeah. Compared to, like, the original. Just as I could see with this new one, Top Gun Maverick, I could see this movie being, like, significantly better than this movie by having that grounded sort of nature about you know, the repercussions of Goose's death, just like Apollo's death had repercussions in both of the Creed movies. Yeah. Because Miles Teller is meant to be Goose's son, right? Yes. Is, and that, I remember, the whole, is that the whole thing? Yeah. And I remember it was, supposed, it was bet between him and Glenn Powell, who's also ended up in the movie anyway. Because <laughs> this was... Because our, of reasons. Yeah. That was... They were cast in like 2018 summer. Like, I remember that. And like, yeah. that was the summer that movie that Glenn Powell was in, like, set it up, had just come out. And then it was like announced that he was in the running for Top Gun. Like, everyone was like rooting for him because it's like, oh, he's so like charismatic and everything like that. Yeah. And then Miles Teller got the role and everyone's like, oh, the oh. cocky guy. And then, uh, like, a couple days later, and then Glenn Powell like put out like a snarky tweet. He's like, I'm tearing down all my Tom Cruise posters, winky face. <laughs> and then like a couple of days later, it was like, oh yeah, they wrote a new role for Glenn Powell so he could be in the movie. So yeah. I mean, it's it's funny that you bring the the sequel um to the conversation that way because one of the things that that I that I'm thinking now, especially my first experience with Tom Gunn and and the reasons I've enjoyed it, right? 
even knowing the technology that we have, and you got to think, one of the big factors in the new Top Gun movie has to be the fact that aircraft technology has surprisingly improved over the years, right? Yeah. Um, so 30 years to do that, some, yeah. Yeah, 30, yeah. <laughs> um, it's like Pokemon cards. Um, but um, one of the most interesting things here is, is that I still feel that when it comes to the action scenes and uh, the stunt work, mm. the original one still holds a high bar. Oh, yeah. Because of the type of action that it is, right? Yeah. So, so I got, so I got, my, my, my thinking is, will this new director capture what Tony was able to capture with the camera? Um, the kind of intensity, because here's the thing though, you can say that the picture is going to look clearer. Yes. New cameras will do that, but will he get the angles? Will he get the action, the, 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 the shift between cockpit and the, all that, you know what I mean? Um, I, I just find it so interesting. That's, that's what I'm going to be looking for when I watch the sequel. Um, and then of course, all the drama. <laughs> so. Yeah. Especially um, just going through everything with um, how they crafted like the, those action scenes in the original using uh, scale models and everything like that because they couldn't do CGI. And it's like, it's, it's crazy to me how great that movie still looks. And then some CGI yes. ages very poorly. So yes. having the right mix, like I hope they yeah. probably just blend the two, like enhance it with CGI. So it mm -hmm. doesn't age like milk in two years. Yeah. Yes. It's funny you say that because I think that hopefully, hopefully, one of the saving graces to to the film being made is the fact that Tom Cruise is still attached because yeah. Yeah. anybody can say whatever they want about Tom Cruise. We all know that Mummy movie sucked. We all know that. Yeah. Don't matter. But 90% of his filmography is actually – he has made a name in himself because there is a product out there, and that product is Tom Cruise. Yes. And throughout the decades, we still want to buy it. Yeah. There's a reason for that. And one of the biggest reasons is because he believes in authenticity. He believes in providing a thrilling experience to audiences that feels authentic and real. And in a movie like this, in a world where CGI reigns, you, I think we all can agree that Tom Cruise is pushing for things to be as practical as possible because he does things as practical as possible. So I'm kind of like wondering how this is going to look because those trailers for Maverick look phenomenal. So I, I can't wait. Yeah. I'm excited. I am going to say something a little sacrilegious here, but it was something I brought go. up with a friend the other day. You know, Tom Cruise... Again, say what you will about him. Say what you will about some of his movies, like, you know, The Mummy or uh, that second Jack Reacher movie. He's essentially the actor version of Christopher Nolan in his way of advocating for the theatrical experience on a practical level. Yes. Really, like, yes. having that yes. kind of control. Like, if you saw some of the news in the news recently, like, he's at odds with Paramount over uh, the the like theatrical window move window over i think either the new top gun or i think the next mission impossible yeah, they probably them all for like, yeah because he's still, i think they're filming seven and eight back to back right because yes. it's gonna be his last right yeah because at the same time it's the reason why i think it took to this point for top gun to finally be made is so is because now tom cruise has that kind of power I mean, look at the last several yeah. Mission Impossible movies. Like, yes. really, in a way, Ghost Protocol reignited his career in a way that we didn't, no one really saw coming. Right. And after that, he's done movies like Edge of Tomorrow. And even The Mummy, I, I guess it would kind of be his fault, but that was also Universal trying to get ahead of themselves. A lot of his Monsters, other movies, yeah. yeah, he has all of that control over these movies and he wants to make it as authentic as possible like right. that movie he did where he another movie where he was a pilot i think like one of his last movies he did uh was american made like no one if that wasn't tom cruise i think that movie 
would have just fallen under by the wayside. Yeah, I don't think as many people remember that as some of other uh, Tom Cruise's other recent films. But still, that movie's way better than I ever expected it to be. And I think it's because Tom Cruise's like commitment at working with these particular directors like uh, Doug Lyman or like a Christopher McQuarrie or now he's really teaming up with uh, Joseph Kaczynski, the director behind this one. To have those directors that can really work with him to create that feel that is actually improving on like technical technical aspects of like a blockbuster. Yeah. I know that was some rambling, but I hope that made sense. No, no, no uh, it makes sense because you – go, Mike. No, I was just going to say it was going to be – Slightly off topic, but I just love how Tom Cruise is able to evolve as well, right? Um, yeah. He's able, he's not still making movies that feel like 80s movies. He's able no. to change his he's acting adapted. style. He's so adapted. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like even you look at the Mission Impossible series, right? You look at Ghost wow, Protocol, yes. fantastic movie. Yeah. But Ghost Protocol feels nothing like Fallout. No, you know, or nothing. Mission. <laughs> look, go so, to the original Mission Impossible. Yeah. Right? And so it's like, even in that same series, it's evolving and changing the further along it goes and becomes it co- it becomes more reflective of the time period it's in. You look at Top Gun yes. in the 80s, and then you look at Top Gun Maverick, which does not feel like it's in the same franchise at no. all looking from the from the trailers. But I think that's again just representative of Tom Cruise being able to adapt with the era he's yeah. in, and that's why he stays relevant. That's why he's one of the last big movie stars. Right. from that era because he's able to keep adapting it's funny you say that because you got to think about the only thing that the only through line in top gun maverick to this one is the fact that the same jacket's there <laughs> it's tom cruise and the jacket yes because the bike's not the same everything else is different the planes are not the same uh but you can see maverick you yeah. can see yeah. him you know and and, and it's and, it, and like i said i love how as as we were ta- as you guys were talking about um, Tom Cruise evolving and in, into the eras, the idea that Tom Cruise is one of those actors that you can say this Tom Cruise we saw in the seventies is now the same Tom Cruise in the eighties is not the same Tom Cruise in the nineties, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, speaks to the amazing career that he's had and also the devotion to his craft and also finding what are the right roles for him, right. because you know there's a lot of actors. We're not going to count Nick Cage because the guy can do anything. He's got massive Apparently. talent. Come yeah. on. It's an unbearable way to yes. massive talent. Um, yes. Hey. But um, but I, I can't wait to see more of it. I mean, it's funny the fact that a franchise like Mission Impossible that everybody thought was gonna just going to crash and burn after John Woo tried it. Mm. Um, but it, it's become this colossal franchise that keeps bringing talent and 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 – and taking us in these adventures. And and now I'm just I just can't wait to you know get on a plane with Tom Cruise now. So um I'm excited for Top Gun Maverick. I'm glad that we took the time to talk about this one. And um that's all I got. You guys got any um Nate, any closing thoughts? Anything that you would say to anyone that's never taught Maverick? Sell us the movie, damn it. <laughs> Do you like Tom Cruise? If you're excited or have ever been interested in the evolution of a movie star who's still working today, I think you take a look at Top Gun. You can even take a look back a couple years earlier, like a risky business. Watch those and lead it up to a Top Gun Maverick, and you can actually see the evolution of like the movie star. As you were saying, Mike, um, none of Tom um, Cruise's like, recent movies feel like the throwbacks like cheesy, they always have that modern filmmaking uh, approach to them. I think that's maybe of what may have harmed the mummy that could have used that kind of campy feeling. But at the same time, Tom Cruise is always about improving and his movies are always about improving and innovating. He's trying to make a movie where he goes to literal space. I mean, I don't know if that's ever gonna happen, but it's still, just this movie is like the perfect launch pad to see the birth of a movie star. I'm going to say this before Mike, you give your thoughts in regards to the mummy. Now I haven't seen it, but I know this much. 
<laughs> I know that Tom Cruise gave it at all. You know yes. why? Because he ran a lot in that movie too. Yes. <laughs> if Tom Cruise runs, he gave it his all. I have a I, scream from that movie as my ringtone. Oh my god. That is That's a incredible. horrible life you live, Nate. That is incredible. <laughs> Mike, closing thoughts on Top Gun. I can't top that, man. I really can't. We should just cut it right there. That's incredible. I just yeah. edit the scream in now. But yeah. no, on Top Gun, I, everything Nate said is true, right? I feel like this true. is peak 80s Tom Cruise, right? And then seeing that evolution from there is incredible. Um, yeah. I think the entire cast is great. Like Val Kilmer, he just owns every scene he's in. He's not in the movie that often, but I mean, come on. No. Like, Iceman came to play in this movie. And so I, I didn't go for the direct Batman and Robin reference, but I alluded to it. And I just Fair threw enough. it all subtlety right then and there. Fair enough. Fair enough. The ice man cometh. Yeah, no, but it's it's just a fantastic film. Um, I just yeah. love it. Love the craft of it all. You know, like, again, getting those action scenes, getting those that summer feeling, right, injected into yeah. it. And even if we can't quite nail how or why it works, the fact of the matter is it does work. And I feel like that's exactly why Top Gun Maverick got delayed for like the billionth time to get it out of the fall and winter <laughs> to make sure it had a summer release because <laughs> there's just something special. Top Gun in summer is just a special feeling. And so it's just a great move that I ended up. I'm probably going to put it in my summer rotation a little more often because I just had a blast watching it this last time. Yeah, awesome. As someone that watched Top Gun for the first time, I got to say, some things didn't work, but... The, the idea, the essence of what Top Gun is, is pure 80s and great cinema. So you're Did it take to... your breath away? You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, what I am going to say is this, is that after watching this movie, I will never lose that loving feeling. Um, hey. So, I know, guys, watch Top Gun. It's a great watch. It's a great time. And it's the sequel's coming out very soon, and I got to tell you, there's no way you're going to enjoy Maverick as much as you would if you watch the original Top Gun. Yes, it's a classic. I got to say it, it's a classic. Nate, awesome you being with us. Thank you for joining us, man. Uh, so happy to be here. Awesome. So we got to do right. this again. So we will see you next time. We get you back here at the Shadow After. Um, yeah. if, if people wanted to find you in the webs, where can people find you, man? You can find me on Twitter at Nate Knows Movies. You could also find my words at Collider. I'm a, also a resource editor there, so I work a lot with Mike there. And cool. um, you could also find me at the Film Yap. I occasionally will review movies for them or on my own personal blog, Movie Hound. So, so different places. Mike Thomas, where can people find the Cinephile? Uh, you can find me at youtube.com slash novicinephile, where there's a chance you're probably listening to this there. So just click the subscribe button down there at the bottom of the tab. Um, you can also find me at novicinephile on Twitter and collider.com, like Nate just mentioned. It's just fun talking movies with you guys everywhere. So you can also find me on TikTok, even though I have no idea what I'm posting there at the moment, because all my TikToks are just spur of the moment things. So give me a follow there, too. You can find me at the Scarlet Fan 52 on Twitter, at the Scarlet Fan 52 on Instagram, and at the Scarlet Fan 52 on TikTok, even though I have no idea what I'm doing there. I'm trying to reconnect with my Flash um, past and, and future. So I might be putting a lot more Flash stuff on Twitter. I'm, a, I'm one of the biggest Flash fans out there, I would assume. Yes. Um, my favorite superhero that. of all time. Thank so, you. <laughs> so Wait, time I can't... out. Nate. Barry Allen or Wally West? I'm, I'm Barry. <laughs> Mommy! Yes. And that's a friendship so, was born. <laughs> and that's, it's, it's just like a strike of lightning. Um, yeah. <laughs> so if you love what we do here at the Shatter After podcast, we cover movies every two weeks. Um, we recently did The Batman. We did The Sunset Limited. We did The Godfather and 50th Anniversary. And we have a lot more movies. The anniversary for Blade Runner is coming up. So we're going to do a lot of Blade Runner with a big cast crew. So we have a lot of things coming up in the chatter after. If you love listening to us, check our playlist 
at the Novice Cinephile channel on YouTube. And if you want to hear from us in the podcast forms, in the ears, you can go to Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Radio Public. Some of the video podcasts are also on Spotify. So click a subscribe, click a follow, give us a five-star rating. You guys are awesome. And if there's any movies you guys want us to cover, any suggestions, put it down in the comments below. Who knows? You might be here. Have it awesome, guys. Peace. Plus ultra. Plus ultra.